Hi everybody, Dan Ullman along with Matt Bernier. Welcome to Breeders' Cup Focus. The Breeders' Cup pre-entries are out and we're going to take a look at the contenders for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf as ranked by Daily Racing Form Brad Free's Morning Line Odds. We've got a couple of European entrants trained by Aiden O'Brien as your two Morning Line favorites according to Brad. Anthony Van Dyke 7-2, Broom at 4-1 and last week uh, Aiden O'Brien told Daily Racing Form Marcus Hirsch, Matt, that Anthony Van Dyke was unlikely for this race, but here he is, not only pre-entered for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf, but the 7-2 morning line favorite on Brad's line. Yeah, you know what? If he comes over here, you have to respect him. Anything O'Brien sends over, obviously, merits respect, but particularly a horse like Anthony Van Dyke, who it looks like he could be a little bit of anything. And, and I kind of feel like that most recent run in the Dewhurst, I wonder if he's uh, perhaps a little bit better coming from a little bit farther back than he was that day. Now, this horse has won a couple of group races already at seven furlongs. You could argue his most impressive victory came in his maiden win at this one mile distance where he ran off and hid and won by eight lengths against sub our competition. Let's look at that Dewhurst that you mentioned, however. He is down towards the inside, and he kind of makes the lead a little bit early here, and he's just no match for the top two. The winner of this race, Too Darn Hot, is a very exciting prospect, however, and Anthony Van Dyke Chimp simply was just overmatched. We see him now. He's taking the lead. They're going to be coming for him on the outside. I thought, all in all, this was a really solid third-place effort. The Dewhurst has been a very strong prep race for the Breeders' Cup Juve turf and if he runs here he is a major contender to be sure yeah it certainly is and again ultimately you've got to let price be your guide but at the same time i feel like he if he does run he's one of the more likely win contenders in a race like this and again if you if you find three to one fine then go right ahead i don't think you're gonna get a heck of a lot more on a horse like this Broom is the second choice on Brad's morning line at 4-1. to one. Broom is still only a maiden winner from five starts, but he was Group 1 placed most recently at Longchamp in the Prix Jean-Luc Lagardère. We're going to take a look at that race right now. Now, Broom was able to make the lead from the get-go under Ryan Moore in this short field, and I don't really think they were going very fast. He just couldn't hold on. He fights very gamely down towards the inside, but to me, I was slightly disappointed by this performance. We were talking before we came on the air, and you think this horse might be a grinder that wants a little more distance. Yeah, I, I see his sire, Australia, who, who was really a horse that seemed to excel going longer distances. I wouldn't be surprised at all, especially if this horse, Broom, does have that little bit of early speed. And it's worth noting, Ryan Moore tried to ask him a little bit out of the gate to establish that early position. Wouldn't be surprised at all if he turned into a horse that wanted every bit of a mile and a half and just sort of was a bit of a stay, or maybe he doesn't have that ability to quicken as some of these other runners, most notably a horse like Anthony Van Dyke or someone else in here. The leading North American base contenders on Brad's morning line are the one-two finishers in the recent grade three bourbon stakes at Keeneland. That's current for Todd Pletcher and Henley's joy for Michael Maker. This is a very striking stretch run from current as we take a look at the drive of the bourbon. I thought all in all Henley's joy at a pretty decent trip down towards the inside. He's eventually going to come out and come with his run, but here comes current flying on the outside. This is a strong photo finish. Uh, it looks like for a second that Henley's Joy's got the big jump. Current's a little green in the lane, but boy, current comes flying to deny the runner up. Yeah, you know, the way that Current finished that day, I think additional real estate eventually will be a little bit more beneficial for him, but clearly a mile, mile and a 16th isn't going to be a problem. I think as far as the domestic hopes are concerned, I think he deserves to be one of the shorter prices in here, not just because of the connections, but I love the way that he finishes. And a tough loss for Henley's joy in that race. He has more tactical speed than current. He is a nose away from being a perfect three for three in his career. And he has a master horseman in Michael Maker, basically making all the decisions. Henley's joy, I think, is a little bit of an outsider in this spot. And he's going to be a good price if these two Europeans come. Let's talk about line of duty. I know you're very high on this Godolphin runner. He is by uh, Gallo. Leo, just a super stallion. He is also Anthony Van Dyke's stallion. And this horse won his maiden at a mile two starts back. He's just improved with distance. His most recent race, the Group 3 at Chantilly, was at a mile and an eighth. And I thought he ran great. He was down inside. He was in some traffic. He was forced to bull his way through the last 16th of a mile. He won that race very comfortably. This is an exciting prospect for Charlie Appleby. Certainly is. And I, I really, I think the thing that, that I was most taken by was the fact that for a moment, it didn't seem like he was going to find that seam. And when he finally got through, not only did he get through, but he quickened. And really, I feel like, especially with these two-year-olds in races like this, 
it's one thing if you think down the road, maybe some other horses, whether it's a broom or someone else, additional distance is going to be to their benefit. This horse has already proven that distance isn't going to be any sort of a problem, but he's also shown a devastating kick. And also, you've got top-level connections that know how to win over here in the Breeders' Cup. Obviously, Godolphin, Charlie Appleby. I'm just very, very interested in line of duty. He's another one that I feel like I'll probably just end up defaulting to. A couple under-the-radar Europeans I think we should discuss is uh, Maurice Diamond, who's run nine times already. So he certainly should have enough bottom to stretch out for a mile. He's never gone a route of ground in his career. Solid horse, uh, Group 3 winner, multiple Group 2 placed. Hasn't been able to get over the hump in Group 1 company. I thought that was kind of an interesting ride last time out in the middle park. We actually made the front early, then it looked like he was going to be badly outpaced, and then he came again. Maybe he will want a little bit longer. He's going to be under the radar at a giant price. Yeah, and you know, I guess this is one of those races where if you don't necessarily trust any of the shorter prices, why not take a shot on a European coming over here getting some class relief? But admittedly, when I look at it, the distance, I'm not really too terribly concerned. I think they're going to be able to get out to that mile. I just think it's more a matter for me of concern with is he really this good? Because when they've tested him over there, he's gotten his doors blown off. I just don't know that he's quite up to snuff as far as some of these better horses are concerned. It's a fair point to be sure. Uh, another one coming off of a group win in France is the Black Album. He was 16 to 1 when they won the Prix La Rochette last time out. It was a hard fought blanket finish. Not sure how good he is, but he's really only run one dud in his career. Yeah, he, I was going to say he's. I feel like he's kind of unexposed. You haven't seen him, you haven't seen enough of him to make a definitive statement. The only thing that leads me to be a little bit concerned is when you look at the time form ratings that he has earned, as opposed to some of the other Europeans. He is he's quite slow. He's considerably slower than the O'Brien couple. He's considerably slower than a horse like uh, like Line of Duty. I just think there's a real scenario where he's going to need to up his game significantly if he's going to threaten for the win. We talked about too darn hot being one of the leading two year olds, if not the leading two year old in Europe. Europe right now. A horse that finished second to him in the Solario Stakes was Arthur Kitt, who was coming off a little bit of a layoff. He was no match for Too Darn Hot that day after a pace-setting gambit. Last time out in the Royal Lodge Stakes, really in fire for, for one reason or another, and that was kind of a disappointing performance in his first start at a mile. You look at his pedigree, though, and you would think he should get a distance. I was going to say, I almost wonder if this is going to be too sharp for him. And again, very similar to what I spoke about with Broom. Broom being by Australia, this horse being by Camelot. We know distance, 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 going to want to go all day. Um, I, I I agree with you. I feel like that Royal Lodge was disappointing, and I don't think there was really any excuse for it. He was one-paced, but that's kind of what I think we may end up looking at. He may be a one pace sort of distance type. Anthony Van Dyke, 7-2 to two on Brad Free's preliminary morning line. That's the favorite for the juvenile turf. But stay tuned for all of Daily Racing Forum's Breeders' Cup coverage. DRF.com forward slash BC. This race still in flux. We see an overflow field. It's quite possible that the complexion of this race completely changes once they draw entries next Monday.